First, I would like to introduce myself and talk a little bit about how I got into all of this stuff. Um, Rape is uh, important to us, but it is kind of an auxiliary with the rest of what we do. We have plant ceremonies, um, and I also do integration after the fact. Um, and I do a lot of talks on Hermeticism and Freemasonry, because before I got so deeply into actually the practice of, of plant medicine, um, I was into the, the Western mystery school tradition, and I did learn a lot about consciousness and different practices. Um, and one of the most interesting things about that is that I found that the, the practices of esotericism, um, there's a lot of uh, similarities in um, the Western tradition and in shamanism. Uh, there's models that are the same. Um, for example, the, the, the three pillars in Freemasonry are represented by coca leaves that represent the same thing in the um, in a tribe in uh, Bolivia. And uh, also we speak of dark magicians turning to the left and healers turning to the right. And even in the jungles of Borneo, the left-hand path is dark sorcery and the right-hand path is those that work for the collective well-being. So um, when we see these things that are consistent in different traditions, it's uh, you know at least interpreted by people like me as an indication that there's a consensus, which is how we you know, establish reality. So um, I started studying psychoactive plants in uh, second grade, which may seem a little bit crazy, but it was kind of a fluke. The library um, at the elementary school that I attended had stocked a book called Flowering Plants that looked pretty innocuous. It just had a heavenly blue morning glory, which I'm sure the librarian did not know contains LED, which is a natural analog to LSD. It's actually the first time that a substance was synthesized in a laboratory and then discovered in nature after the fact. So I found this book on the shelf and uh, I started reading it and I became fascinated you know, with the folklore of uh, you know, mandrake and the terra plants in um, Europe and uh, of course all of the entheogenic plants in the Amazon basin and the desert southwest, southwest in North America. And so by the time I was in, uh, I don't know, seventh grade, I'd read the Psychedelic Encyclopedia I think three times, which is like an 1100 page tome. And I also got into um, the study of different types of psychology, um, different forms of mysticism, and um, different magical practices. And so my life goal has kind of been to synthesize all of this stuff and combine these practices in order to come up with something that kind of draws from the best parts of all these traditions and kind of excludes some of the superstitions and dogmas. And um, also I like to try to interpret things in both a modern scientific basis and in a traditional spiritual basis because um, I think that uh, everything has to work through a mechanism. It, and, and so it's not that magic isn't real, it's just that people try to do impossible things with it. So the relationship with consciousness and energy is just starting to be understood. And I think that um, with the right perspective and some vigilance, you can kind of see how, you know, the, the, the chemical, uh, for example, you know, a lot of people, uh, the cliche has been that the, the entheogenic or, or psychedelic path is not a true type of spirituality, that it's a cheat, um, some kind of shortcut, and that it's not legitimate. And uh, the analogy I like to make is that, you know, the Gnostics talk about the demiorgos. And to me, the chemical barrier is that demiorgos between us and the other reality. So it's kind of like a, um, Aldous Huxley, the author, called it a, a reducing valve in the consciousness. Because there's so much energy, so much information, so much going on in the universe that we cannot hunt a deer, for example, if there's sacred geometry pulsing in the air and we can see all the energies distorting our vision. And, so um, the different psychedelics take down these fields for or filters for varying amounts of time and they take down different frequencies so we're able to perceive different elements of reality and so all of these medicines have different purposes ibogaine from africa is very effective for example at treating opiate addiction um, psychedelic mushrooms uh, it has been discovered are the best treatment for addiction and depression uh, <clears throat> way higher success rate, exponentially higher than um, without, uh, and even some of the um, man-made synthetics like MDMA and LSD have been shown to be more effective than any other type of treatment for certain uh, psychological disorders like addiction and uh, in the case of MDMA, PTSD. And so Rape is often used in conjunction with all of these other medicines. Um, it's very grounding, it focuses the mind, uh, Earlier, I made this uh, reference to um, how consciousness has a relationship with energy. So anytime you take something that focuses the mind, 
especially if the mind is already open. And so it's engaged with all of these different frequencies and energies. And then you're able to bring focus into that environment. Your ability to manifest things, to understand things, to manipulate energies is um, very strongly increased. In fact, something that a lot of people don't realize about the Western Mystery Schools, the Freemasons, and this esoteric tradition is that one of the secrets is actually DMT. The acacia leaf is sacred to the Freemasons. It's sprinkled on their grave when they're buried. Uh, the wands that are used in the temples are made from acacia, and that is because it contains DMT. And they have been using, um, <clears throat> like in the Eleusinian uh, uh, mysteries, there was, they called it soma. So even in these mystery schools, they have always had uh, a psychoactive sacrament that has been used. Um, Okay, so, um, and then tobacco, I wanted to talk a little bit specifically about tobacco because tobacco is kind of the fundamental constituent in Rabe. Um, in the Western world, we tend to see it as like a toxic, addictive, destructive, unhealthy uh, practice, and it is if you're chain smoking it. It, it is one of the best, uh, you'll destroy parasites. Um, physically, this is probably the most well-known and the most proven. In fact, some tobaqueros say that uh, the tobacco is able to reach the blockages that ayahuasca and San Pedro cannot. So, um, the other thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is DMT, because it's very common for rape to be made with um, the Wilco seed, uh, and there are two trees that have slightly different compositions in the seeds. The one that we use is the, um, the Wilco tree. Actually, there's one in the park out there if you guys want to see it. Um, it's the only tree in the park that has a sign. <laughs> for some reason, they felt compelled to label this one. So um, I, I guess we already talked about the study a little bit, but um, DMT has been shown to have some uh, some very powerful neuroprotective uh, qualities. It boosts the immune system. Um, of course, it induces all kinds of uh, very powerful spiritual experiences. Um, there's a lot of studies finally being done, and uh, we're really excited about that, to see all this red tape being peeled back and finally finding out how these things work, why they work, and proving for sure that they actually do work. Um, DMT is also extraordinary in that it is so powerful and it is so safe. Uh, bad trips are actually extremely rare and um, death is nearly, it's nearly impossible to overdose. You'd have to consume an ounce, which is, you know, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, let's talk about our different rapes. Um, all of our rapes are started with a, 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 a Palo Santo ash, ash, which acts as a potentiator. Um, alkaloids need some kind of base in order to um, catalyze them, um, make them active, and so um, Palo Santo is, is, is our choice of wood. Uh, and of course, you know, it's known for its uh, energetic cleansing um, smoke, and um, it stands to reason that it would have the same function if you ingest it. So um, that's the base in all of our rapes. And then also the coca plant, um, which, uh, you know, I'm sure you know is, is the source of cocaine, but in the coca plant, there's only 1% of that alkaloid, so it's, it's not like a very strong cocaine effect, but it is uh, a bit stimulating. It focuses the mind. Um, I feel like it stimulates creativity. Whenever I take it, I tend to have a lot of ideas, and the mind goes very quickly. So I think that the combination of uh, a strong tobacco, which I didn't mention, the tobacco that these are made from, the mapacho, uh, is, has about 20 times the nicotine of regular, like commercially grown tobacco, so it's very, very strong. Um, but what I'm saying is that I think that the, uh, the, uh, the way that the two plants work together uh, really uh, complements each other. Uh, and then also we have a Guayusa ayahuasca, and I'm sure you guys all know what ayahuasca is, so there's probably not much um, reason to talk too much about that. But in this context, it's not psychoactive, it's just there to stimulate um, lucid dreaming. And in combination with Guayusa, uh, one of the local tribes, the Quichua, uses Guayusa uh, ritualistically um, in order to uh, stimulate lucid dreaming, and then everyone meets in the morning and they talk about their dreams. And it's, um, uh, it's, it's a very important plant, very sacred to a lot of the indigenous peoples in this area. And it also contains a small amount of caffeine, uh, lots of antioxidants and vitamins. Um, when you're taking it in the rape, that's not necessarily what you're looking for. I'm just saying that it's um, probably good to drink Guayusa tea very good for you. Um, and then we have uh, our newest rape, which is made from um, the tonka bean. Uh, and the tonka bean is uh, banned in a lot of the Western world. 
because it's considered dangerous. Um, it actually really isn't dangerous. You would have to extract a bunch of cumarin and eat it in order to actually do any damage to your liver. And it does have um, physiological benefits from taking the tonka bean. What exactly those are, opinions seem to range a lot. But ceremonially, ritualistically, for spiritual purposes, um, it is uh, an oil is made in a lot of tribes that is applied to people when they are initiated into manhood. And um, it is taken before and after ceremonies in a lot of cases, as is guayusa. I forgot to mention that the Quechua will drink guayusa before and after ayahuasca ceremonies. So um, the tonka bean is also considered a very strong aphrodisiac, and it does have very complex and um, pleasing aromas of cherry and vanilla. And it is actually used in like gourmet restaurants where it's not illegal as a um, flavoring. Okay, so we talked about the matico, the tonka, the coca. Okay, and then the Wilco rape is, um, this is made by heating the Wilco seed, pop the skin off, peel the skin off, um, and then you grind the seed, and then you have to heat a giant snail shell to 900 degrees for an hour so that it can be pulverized and used as a potentiator um, in order to make catalyze the alkaloids in the Wilco seed. And so um, our rape does have enough that you will feel some effect from the Wilco, but it's not going to be like a full-blown psychedelic experience. It's just kind of a body load. Um, and of course, microdosing DMT has been shown to uh, provide the, the neuroprotective um, qualities and uh, also to boost the immune system. So um, I think that's all of our rapes. Uh, and I guess we should talk about the Tepi and Caripe. Um, this one is used for self-administration. Um, I guess I will demonstrate on myself so that uh, you guys know what to do should you choose to have some rape. So we use, I, I, I say like half a pea for each nostril and we just scoop it into the pipe. It's very important to focus your consciousness before consuming rape. When we talked about this uh, focusing of the mind leading to greater powers of manifestation, you really want to take a second to take some deep breaths clear the mind and make sure that it's very clear what it is that you're trying to manifest or what you're trying to learn or if you're just trying to open up that you just have a very clear idea and that your mind is focused and not don't start thinking about shit. Okay, and so um, it's important that you don't, um, you don't need to inhale through the nose. You just place the pipe in the mouth. And it's important to balance the energy. You always do both nostrils. You never do just one. So if anyone would like to try the rape, um, I can come around. Uh, you can either self-administer it or I can administer it to you. Okay. 